All right, so it has been quite some time since I've done a full self-driving video with my commentary, with just some thoughts about the drive. And it's because full self-driving is just getting so good. Like you can just get in the car, you can push the start self-driving button and it just goes. Like there's nothing controversial. There's nothing that happens. I feel like back on version 12 and version 11 when I was making these videos, you'd kind of be sitting there on the edge of your seat wondering what it would do to mess up. You were kind of finding these areas where full self-driving needed work. And sure, there's still a long road to go before it's absolutely perfect. But where it's at right now is so good that it's almost boring. Like it's boring to just get in the car and go. So that's why I do a lot of those time-lapse videos where you watch the car drive for let's say an hour and a half condensed down into a minute because that's a great way of showing like, hey, I'm going from point A to point B without touching the wheel and here's everything that I encountered from all of the different roads. Uh, so for this video, we are driving over the Walt Women Bridge we're heading down to Millville for a photo shoot, uh, doing some work for a real estate client. So this is a drive that I do every day. I start in Philly, I drive over to Jersey, go over one of the bridges, go through tolls, go on back roads, windy roads, state highways, interstates, and the car just does everything. The car just handles absolutely everything. Um, what's special about this drive is that it is my first drive on 14.2.2.2. So it's crazy. We've had so many updates. Uh, I know that people are kind of making a big fuss and a big stink whenever a brand new version comes out. But for me, I really don't want to make a big deal out of anything other than some sort of like first number change. Like obviously a version 14 of version, version 15 would be huge. But really what I'm waiting for is like going from 14.2 to 14.3. I think that's going to be, you know, a really big change. Um, so we've now been driving for 16 minutes. We've gone about 12.7 miles. Just to kind of pull up the release notes here, uh, you notice that I am on 14.2.2.2, following another Model Y, following another Tesla. I have no idea what his deal is. I really love the look of the new Model Y. But I think the one thing I'm looking for on this drive is the merging and the overall understanding of lanes. I think that where we're at right now with the Tesla, especially with Mad Max, is like, how does the car understand where to drive? Uh, and how does it understand lane changing? I'll tell you what, when I'm driving, I am pretty much exclusively in Mad Max because it's kind of similar to how I drive as a human. And like, see, with this, this is my gripe with Mad Max is it's gotten me into this slower lane when I could have just hammered down that left lane over there where the other Tesla is. It's like Mad Max wants to be fancy and try to find the quickest lane when sometimes the quickest option is just sit in the left lane and just keep driving. And I have a lot of people when I make that, you know, mention through some of my posts, they say, well, it's Mad Max for a reason. It's going to be changing lanes. And it's like, sure. See, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't have gotten into this right lane behind this truck. I would have gotten in this right lane behind these two trucks. So <laughs> this is my biggest gripe with Mad Max. And it's probably one of the things that doesn't get conveyed in the time lapses. It's just its understanding of lanes. Like we've done all of this work when we could have been past that Model Y back there, staying in the left-hand lane. So I don't know. The one thing that really was annoying with Mad Max and merging in general is when you would be sitting in the lane and would want to merge over into another lane. And so I think right now, this whole lane changing thing comes actually down to a navigation error. Just for, and, and I've noticed this where you have these three lanes in the right hand lane and it thinks it needs to get over to the right as far as, as far as possible to keep going straight. And then once that navigation changes there and now it shows that we have to exit, it says, oh, okay, now we can use the full width of the road and all the lanes. So it definitely comes down to a navigation thing too. Navigation is to blame for a lot of issues. Um, but right now uh, with Mad Max, even on more frequent versions, like what I was just on 14.2.2.1, it's so hard to keep track of them. But the previous version did a really good job at fixing the merging. So what I noticed as we kind of progressed through the tree of these different updates for version 14 is the car would want to get into the lane. It would put its turn signal on 
it would like merge a little, come back, and then finally merge back over again. So it was very hesitant, whereas now it knows what it wants to do. It gets over, it merges, it's nice and clean. So right now we are on uh, NJ42. We're about to jump on to 55 to head down to Millville. This is just like a two lane state highway driving all the way down. As you can see, not many winds, not many curves. It's pretty much a straight shot. And up here where we're at, kind of closer to Philly, there's a lot of congestion where you're kind of trying to bounce in between trucks and cars. But as people start to exit, this highway really does open up, which is where Mad Max will shine because it will hit 85 and it'll just keep hammering away. Now, it's funny. I had a friend in the car yesterday who has a Model S and it still is running hardware three. So he's on version 12.6.4 or whatever the last release was for that hardware. And uh, it was his first time in version 14 yesterday in my truck. And he was talking about the speed and he was like, dude, you're going to get pulled over. You're going to get a ticket. And I see that sentiment a lot. I know that right now there's a lot of talk around being able to set some kind of speed limit or some kind of determined speed that you want to go. And I kind of agree with people. Like I would love to be able to tell the car like what speed I want it to go while also maintaining a certain level of aggressiveness. So like the aggressiveness of Mad Max, but like, hey, don't go over 79 because I might get a ticket. Now this road is tough because we are on a 65, a transition from 55 to 65. And I feel like if you're doing 84, 85, you're probably not going to get a ticket. And if you do get pulled over, it's one of those things where you just have a conversation with the officer. You tell them you're not going to do it again and you go on your way. I feel like if you're between like the 10, 15, 20 mile an hour over range on a highway, it's it's a gray area. It's like you've got to it, it comes down to what that police officer is feeling at the time and the mood that they're in and whether or not they're going to pull you over. And if they're looking or not, like maybe they're looking down at their computer or their phone and they don't see you pass by and it just doesn't end up being that big of a deal. I remember back on my Model Y that I had bought in 2021 that had the forward facing radar, you could do up to 90. It would do 90 miles an hour on uh, autopilot. And I would do it on the New Jersey Turnpike. I would set it to 89 and I would let it hammer up in the left lane and never really had any issues. So the speed thing, you know, obviously it's a touch and go subject. People of course want to follow the law. They want to be law abiding citizens, but at the same time I'm doing 85, I'm passing these slower trucks and I'm not really catching up to the car in front of me. Like there are other people doing this speed. Uh, so it's really cool to see that Tesla gives you the ability if you want to be driving at the maximum speed that full self-driving offers because there's a lot of people that drive that same speed. And like right now I'm running late. I've got to be where I should be at 10, but I'm, I'm going to be there at 10 ET. So any time that I could save would be helpful in this regard. Um, so yeah, it's gotten to the point now where these full self-driving videos are like boring. Like you guys are going to sit here for 20 minutes and just watch the car flawlessly drive. Unless there's like something in the middle of the road up here or somebody cuts me off, it just does what it's told. Uh, my update right now for the amount of miles I've driven, I'm at 97% since updating to 14.2, 90% of my miles driven on full self-driving. So, you know, full 14.2 came out a month ago about. Uh, so it's crazy to see that I've let the car drive me 4,500 miles. I know that uh, a fellow self-driving video creator, David Moss, just hit uh, 10,000 miles in his car. And he also did a full cross-country trip on full self-driving. And um, I mean, this is like the equivalent of that, plus maybe almost another drive back. You know, you've got about 2,500 miles from coast to coast. So it's super impressive that the car is able to do this. And again, it's just like, it's expected now. You see a lot of complaints online from people talking about some of the issues uh like the merging for example on mad max they said that the merging was too timid the merging was too hesitant and while i agree while i think that it was true it's just so funny that we're at that point right now where people are saying that oh because of these hesitations when we're merging uh it's unusable i don't use full self-driving because of it and it's like okay but the car still takes you from point a to point b without having to touch the wheel so we've just become so accustomed and so spoiled to how good full self-driving is 
that it now comes down to those edge cases and those small little things that we're now seeing improved with just like these small updates, like just a 0 0.0001 update and we get now better merging. So it is just super impressive to see where full self-driving has come to. And it's at the point now where like, how many more videos do you have to make about full self-driving until it just becomes like, I think somebody on Twitter said or on X said, like you're riding an elevator. Like it's just like you just get in and it just does its thing. Uh, so yeah, for me, I've been exclusively driving on Bad Max. I've experimented with some of the other driving profiles. Like Hurry is a really good driving profile if you don't want it to be like a, you know, cracked up driver where it's going in between all the vehicles. So Hurry is still a very good profile. But again, I like the Mad Max feature because all of these people that try to ride the left lane in the in the uh, in the passing lane and they're doing, you know, below the speed limit or they're just driving slow, it without hesitation just goes into the right lane, passes them, gets over and moves on. It is also insanely windy today. It's not as windy as it was uh, yesterday and the car on full self driving was just being pushed all over the place. Like you could actually see the wheel moving from side to side, trying to compensate for the wind. It was pretty crazy, uh, but very cool to see that, you know, basically whatever condition you're in, the car is going to be able to handle it. Uh, usually before I get in the car, I like to do a small little cleaning of the cameras. I didn't do it this time. That front camera is pretty, pretty tough, that lower camera, but the others seem to be nice and clean. We haven't gotten much snow here, so not a lot of salt on the ground. I really do wish that I could clean that front camera while driving. I don't understand why full self-driving won't let it be done. I understand that temporarily it completely blocks the camera, but I feel like it would be nice to just be able to get a quick clean while I'm driving. Now, right now, I do have this truck behind me. He's moving pretty good. I wonder if he has a full load, but he is doing about the same speed as me, 83 miles an hour. And I wonder if the car is going to take the opportunity to get into the right lane here and see if he wants to pass, which doesn't look like it's going to do. The car does a really good job now at understanding behavior on the highway. This is something that I've complained about for a while. For the longest time, it would just sit here in the left lane. And if it was doing 75, 78, like I remember back on version 13, it really never wanted to get to that 85 mile an hour mark. If it was driving that slow speed, I would have people passing me in the right lane all day. But now it, it understands. It drives with traffic. It gets over for faster drivers. It really has come a long way. So, you know, these first, these first drive, these first drive videos for these new software versions, they just seem so unnecessary. Like it seems so unnecessary to get on here and make a video and discuss my thoughts on full self-driving because like, it's just good. It just does what it's supposed to. Uh, so I'm not gonna bore you by talking for the rest of this drive. I'm going to just do a time-lapse for the rest of the video. Uh, I'd love to hear your thoughts on full self-driving. Like what are you guys thinking about version 14.2.2.2? What car are you driving? What are your thoughts? Definitely let me know. Uh, and yeah, enjoy the rest of the drive. I'll talk to you guys in the next one.